I'm Kathy Thomas, and joining me today is Jared Cook, executive chef partner at the new Laguna Hills hotspot, Ironwood. He will show us how to prepare his luscious crab and beet salad drizzled with an incredible dressing. Welcome, chef. This is such a terrific salad, and the dressing is so irresistible. What makes it so good? Well, this dressing is kind of a staple in the restaurant. We use it for everything. I char up all the citrus ahead of time to give it a really smoky, uh, nice depth of flavor. Some caramelized shallots, a little bit of honey, and like I said, we use it for almost everything. Delicious, let's get started. So the way I like to do the beets, uh, I take this little bed of salt that I've made here. It's just kosher salt. This is a little bit of pickling spice. It has clove and different seeds, bay leaves, whatnot. I like the way the salt kind of uh, holds the beets in place and uh, kind of perfumes them with the pickling spice. Here's mm -hmm. the whole beets mm -hmm. I have. These are red bull's blood beets, mm -hmm. as well as a gold variety of heirloom beet. And you've trimmed off the stems. Yes, mm -hmm. absolutely. I like to make sure that they're all similar in size so they cook evenly. And then at that point, I uh, throw this little foil guy on there. Into a hot oven? Yep, 350 degrees. I find it takes typically around an hour and a half. And you want them to be fork tender? Yeah. You have some that are all peeled and ready to go over here. I like to peel them while they're warm. Paper towel, the peels come right off. It's much easier to do it while they're warm. You could do this a day or two in advance if you had to, and then you chill them down, uh, you know, until they're completely cold, and then they're ready to use. And if you're using a cloth or a paper towel, you always want to start with the light-colored beets first. Absolutely, that's a great point because mm -hmm. the uh, red ones stain everything. Right. Yeah. I think we should assemble the salad. All right. So uh, I start with some Supremes. I have some really beautiful blood oranges here, as well as it could be Oro Blanco or red grapefruit, and then uh, just some navel orange here. I just start by, you know, taking the top right off of this guy. Yeah, you're following the contour of the fruit, just swinging that very sharp knife around. Exactly. And then at this point, you just go right into your bowl, juice and all. So you're just going on either side of that membrane yep. to take them off in wedges. Exactly. Next, I'm going to turn to the crab itself. And I wanted to ask you about the crab. Now, do I need to buy this frozen? Do I need to go to Santa Monica sea Seafood? What do I need to do to get crab? Fresh is always best. Today we have some beautiful blue crab. It could certainly be Dungeness. If you can't find fresh, you can find really high quality pasteurized cans of crab. And then I also like to put in a little bit of lump crab meat, just because uh, it's a little bit smaller and kind of mm -hmm. fills in the gaps. I'm going to start on our little beets, which is almost like a quick pickle. I'm going to do a little avocado. And then we're going to do a little bit of shallot in here as well. You've got a beautiful minced shallot. Yeah. So we have capers. I like the, you know, little salty briny quality they bring. Now, a lot of recipes say to rinse them. Mm -hmm. And I'm reluctant to do that. Do you rinse your capers? Uh, no, I don't. I mean, I, I typically, you know, I'll, I'll, get, I'll get the brine off of it, but I like, the whole point is the kind of salty brine that they have. Yeah. I, I don't want to rinse that off or I, I, lose, I, I lose half my flavor. Yeah, I agree. Here's our beautiful blood orange segments. And this is just some navel orange. I'm getting hungry, Chef. We're almost there. Yeah. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. Good amount of pepper, actually. Our charred lemon dressing. Basically, you take your charred citrus and just juice them right into the blender. Uh, I put a little bit of caramelized shallot uh, in there as well. Mm -hmm. uh, a little bit of honey, Dijon mustard, rice wine vinegar, champagne vinegar, uh, and then a little bit of extra virgin and canola oil blend. And I can make that ahead? Absolutely. All right. Yeah. You can, uh, you can make it a week ahead, it's fantastic. I just kind of like rustic wedges. They're just so pretty. Yeah, and they smell so good. Mm -hmm. If it's something this size, I kind of like to leave it as natural as possible. That's just mm -hmm. my preference. Just kind of let it be what it is. A little bit of salt on my beets. You think roasting the beets on a bed of salt, they're gonna be mm -hmm. salty, not at all. And then our beautiful mixture right here just kind of goes very naturally in the center. I top it with some toasted uh, filberts, which I'm from Oregon, so that's my choice, but it could be... Hazelnuts. Yeah, it's hazelnuts. It could be, mm -hmm. it could be uh, pistachios. This could be any nut you like, really. One of the last things I need is I brought this celery. I want to go right to the most tender, greenest leaves. And then they just kind of get placed real naturally around. The last thing we need is our little... Oh, yes. Our little quick pickles. That's gorgeous, Chef. Thank you so much. I can hardly wait to get the forks out. My pleasure. Here's a quick tip from Melissa's. I love to add a little crunch to breakfast. Yogurt and fruit, delicious. 
but add some crunchy toasted quinoa and we're talking. So I've just got some white quinoa here and I'm gonna add a little bit of olive oil or vegetable oil and a little bit of agave syrup. Just give it a little stir and coat your quinoa and then just spread it out as much as you can in a single layer like so. And I've preheated an oven to 375 degrees. And this goes in for about 10 to 11 minutes until it's nicely browned. Quinoa is out of the oven. It's all toasty brown. It looks gorgeous and it's cooled off. So in goes some beautiful Greek yogurt. You can use plain. And I've got some strawberries all ready to go and some kiwi. So we've got two highly nutrient dense fruits here and a little bit of agave syrup and a quick toss. Fruit goes on top. And then that toasted quinoa. That's a delicious breakfast. I'm ready to dig in. The fruit and vegetable aisles are filled with so much potential. Try something new. Have an adventure.